We've got a busy weekend ahead of us working on multiple Zs. We're doing all the things, lots of cool stuff in store. Before I get started for the day, I needed to take the RBZ's wheels off and go get some new rubber. That's right, boys and girls, it's time to get new rubber. It didn't feel bad at first when I was driving it around kind of at low speeds. The last time I went driving, I was on the interstate. Yeah, those tires, they're spanked. They sat in storage way too long. They're not good, and I don't think they're ever gonna recover. So, bit the bullet, bought some Pilot Sport 4S's, which is kind of what I wanted on there anyway, because now we don't have to worry about daily driving, so I don't really need an all-season tire on the Z anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and put that new rubber on. Then we'll get back to the shop and got another Z coming over. We're doing some really cool stuff upgrading two cars at one time it's gonna be freaking awesome so i'll see you when i'm done looking fire i really like the way this new rubber sits on the rim especially in the fronts it's not so stretched it should look nice fill out the wheel well a lot better went to a local place treated me right treated the wheels right had some good conversation it was like an old man real country knew exactly what an rb26 was which was pretty cool and uh yeah dingo's here Got the Z in the garage. Like I said, we're gonna have a couple Zs being worked on this weekend, which is pretty awesome. One of the first things we're gonna do is I've got a brand new big brake kit for the 300ZX. It's one of those like where you swap it in, still use the same caliper. And you're probably thinking, why do you have that? Cause you already have that. Well, originally I bought this to try and put on the Stagia. Initially I was thinking, you know, they use the same size calipers. You can use 300ZX calipers or GTR calipers on the Stagia when you do the conversion. What I didn't realize until after some more math and uh, calculations is that uh, the actual rotors themselves stock are about 12 millimeters bigger than the 300ZX stock rotors. That said, where the actual caliper mounts has that same 12 millimeter difference. And so if I was to use this kit, even though it would all line up, my caliper would be sitting too far off of the rotor. So yeah, not, not a good situation. So we came up with a good idea. I'm gonna install this brand new set on the RBZ and this big brake kit is gonna move over to his car. <laughs> And I know he's excited about it. My brakes be squeaky. <laughs> and, and everybody's winning, right? We're improving two cars at once. So not a total loss. It's gonna be cool. Without any further ado, I'm gonna start tearing this stuff off. He's gonna get his car prepped. We'll start doing the swaps. So a little bit of an update. It's been a couple hours. New Freshy Fresh is on the RB. Looks good. And I'm hoping, I'm gonna test fit the wheel in here just a second, but it sits further back. So I might be able to get rid of my five mil spacer, which will be great. It'll sit in the wheel well just a little bit better. The reason why it's been a little while and I've only got one side done and he's got one side fitted. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, you know, like a kid on Christmas, being very excited, hey, all right. <laughs> unbolted the caliper and then just went Roop, and just twisted it over. And uh, yeah, when you do that, guess what happens? Um, that happens. So. Ingenuity. <laughs> we're making a, <laughs> we're making a custom brake kit. The good news is, is we got everything fitted up and with his wheels and everything, the big brake kit fits. It looks amazing inside the wheel. Bad news is we got no brake line. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we've tried a different couple different solutions and why I would have this, I don't know. Maybe I thought it was a good idea at the time uh, when I was doing my white brakes on her minivan, but I bought a set of StopTech Honda Odyssey braided brake lines. And uh, yeah, so we're making that work. Um, lines up pretty well. It, it, lines up, it lines up well, it's gonna mount just fine. Everything's great. It, uh, it, it has total clearance, lock to lock. So not only is he getting big brakes, he's getting uh, steel braided brake lines as well. From a minivan. From a minivan. One of a kind, custom brake job. But yeah, so far it's all lining up. Here's the brake line here, it's gonna go there. There's a the singular mounting point back here. And then it will actually use a uh, one of these eyelet deals to, to mount to the caliper. And everything's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be great. Gotta do one of the most annoying things in the world uh, next to coolant and that's leading brakes. So not looking forward to that. But uh, we'll keep you posted as we work out this awesome custom job. Hey, man. <laughs> it's great. It's all good. Here's what ended up per perspiring, <laughs> transpiring. The line going from there, it's not going into all these guys anymore. And then it's a banjo fitting here. There's a rubber grommet that we put into that guy right there. Zip ties, it's fine. Don't worry, zip ties are fine. They're legal. Did the obligatory grinding to the caliper and she money. 
she money. Test fit the wheels, everything fits fine, clears the caliper. We're just working on the other side now and then bleeding brakes and it's it's all good. Thank God for being a hoarder. Much later now, but it's it's all good. Everything is, we are winning. Both sides are done. Weird situation with this one. It wasn't lining up right. We we fixed it. Eventually. We <laughs> Eventually. We fixed it eventually. The new brake line's in. Everything's good. Lock to lock. Everything's fine with that. My car's done as well. Just need to put the wheels on, and that's what we're about to do with his car. Again, win-win situation with the brakes. Took us a little longer than should have. It looks light out. It's not. It's dark. We had to make one run for brake fluid because we didn't have that on hand, and everything's awesome, and he's... Big break gang. Oh yeah, big break gang. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get everything buttoned up here. Probably, I'll catch you in the morning. I lied, I'm back because this looks sexy, dude. That looks freaking nice. Nice. That fills out the wheel really well. And good news, I was able to get rid of my five mil spacer. Everything fits. Plenty of room here for activities. Again, win-win, man. Everybody's freaking winning, so it's good. It's really good. Now I'll actually see you tomorrow. Good morning, next day in the Tuesday garage. And I have actually been doing a lot of work, but it's been a long ride on the struggle bus. Trying to figure out my battery mounting situation. Decided to be clever and use riv nuts. Got one there, I got one there. That way I can mount the battery nice and easy. Had to make some custom things for that. Doing this, my riv nut gun kept falling apart. Some. Amazon junk. Finally, I got two done, so that was great, but it was painful. It was really painful. I remember once upon a time, I came upon uh, a battery tie-down bracket that had like a Z cut in it. Searched through all my stuff, sure enough, found it in a bin, just primered and rusty and disgusting, so polished it all up and it's looking freaking fabulous. Cut a little bit of the ends off, the perfect size for the battery so that's gonna be awesome want to keep the battery out because i really want to get to that starter today but i've been working right now on pulling these fittings out my catch can setup was second hand i got it from the og scott i bought it for what it was it was all dash 12 fittings so originally i got some dash 12 fittings from raw brokerage i'm changing the setup i'm going to dash 10 so i needed to pull those out and Gosh, dude, it's it's been insane. There's nowhere for me to actually grip them. I finally did get them out. They were all flush up here, uh, so there was really no way to grip onto them. I did purchase a slide hammer kit, but the problem remained how to attach the slide hammer to the fitting to actually pull them out. So, sacrificed this straight piece, drilled some holes, and put some screws in, and... I got it. Oh, I finally got it out, dude. So now we're back. We got off the struggle bus. We're on the Metro, man. We're, we're freaking cruising. Got these 10 AN rocker cover fittings from Franklin Performance in New Zealand. So one thing I like is that they're black. It actually comes with this nice little cup that goes right over and you press it right in with this. Without any further ado, man, let's just, let's put these in. We're gonna try the old nice trusty rubber mallet first. Get them situated, this little guy right over. Bam, nice and flush. Same with the other side. Bam, perfect fit, looks great. Now it's black, that was too easy. I'm gonna go ahead and dig down, get this starter replaced real quick. And then, you know what time it is, man. It's mine palace time. Just kind of tinkering and dorking around with how I'm gonna fit this catch can. Once I get the battery kind of mocked up and figure out how much space I have left, I think my biggest struggle is gonna be the actual throttle cable right here, kind of in the way, but it's gonna be good. It's gonna be great. I'm I'm excited. I'm back and uh, reached the stopping point, man. But let's talk about the good stuff first. Battery is in its final location. Everything's good to go. Also, you can see I took out all the old catch can wiring. Sitting over there and gonna live on to do another thing. I'm probably gonna sell that dual catch can system and all these used lines. Someone can make something out of it and figure it out on their own, but uh, we're moving forward. Also made the battery bracket thingies. These will screw right down into the rivnuts nuts that are in the battery tray, and then the posts will come up. I still got a trim. And I also got the new starter in. That is looking funky fresh and fly. The reason I reached a stopping point is I started putting the catch can together and noticed that I couldn't find the fittings that go inside the catch can. Last time I bought this exact same catch can, it had these little white screw-in plugs inside the catch can, and then all the fittings were also there. I don't recall there being any white plugs in any of these, and when I opened it all up, none of the fittings were there, and the plugs weren't here, and I'm like, okay, that's weird. And I thought I was going crazy, and I tore everything apart. Maybe I put them somewhere, I, 
I don't freaking know. Finally, I went onto their website, and um, yeah, apparently they're not included anymore. It's it's a feature. It's an extra thing that you have to pay for, the fittings. I'm stuck. I can't do anything, but I think I've figured out how it's going to get mounted. I need to work on the actual bracket to mount it and make sure it's suspended in the right place. But in the meantime, I've had to order fittings, and those won't be here for a couple days, so I'm just kind of... I'm just stuck, man. I'm just stuck. It really sucks because this Saturday is, well, next Saturday. No, this Saturday, because it's Sunday now. It's so, future Saturday is the Cars and Coffee, the one I want to take this car out to. And now, it's, everything's going to be last minute. Everything's going to be last minute because I can't make the lines until, I got to wait. I got to wait, and um, I'll be back in a couple days. The following Thursday. All right, boys and girls, I am back. And those new fittings, they did arrive just like they were supposed to. In those days in between, I did a lot of sitting around. It was kind of a crappy couple days. I was still making moves, if you will. And why am I air quoting all these things? Because in those days, your old man BC had a colonoscopy. And uh, if you know, you know just how fun it is preparing for that type of event in your life. And if you don't know, well kids, you got something special to look forward to in your life when you become my age and older. That sucked. That, that was a that was a rough couple days. Now it's over, we're back. We have everything we need to continue. I've already installed the catch can in its final place, final form. About to start making lines and we'll do that together as a quick refresher on how to make lines and just how easy it is. Permanently got the battery mounted. The polished Z tie down looks really awesome. These little pegs here are riv nutted into the bottom. Yeah, we're, we're making progress. Before we start making those lines though, the UPS just drove by. I'm pretty excited about what's in this box, guys. I'm pretty excited, and I hope you are too. Let's check this out, man. This is awesome. New box of goodies. What could it be? All right, it's a box in a box. And inside that box is another magic box. Oh, shoot. <laughs> this is awesome. Platinum Pro Plug-in Nissan R34 GTT. Wonder what that's for. Here we go. Oh, baby. That's right. A Platinum Plugin Pro for the R34 GTT, which in my discussions back and forth to Haltech and their tech support, trading back pinout diagrams and doing all kinds of verifications, the Stages wiring harness can plug directly into the GTT. Everything's exactly the same. We verified all that. The only difference is four out of the six injectors, the wires just need to be flip-flopped inside my wiring harness to interface with the ECUs because technically this is set up for a Neo, like I said way back, long time ago, even though this is the Series 2 RB25 from an R33, the wiring harness is the harness for a Neo. It's just very bizarre, right? And originally I was gonna just buy an R33 harness and an R33 ECU, but the more and more investigating and information I found, it was like, this is the this is the solution. We now have the new ECU for the freaking Stagia. I'm so pumped, man. But we can't use it yet until we actually do the manual swap because part of the Stagia's ECU actually controls the automatic in conjunction with another automatic controller. We have to get that manual swap done and then we can use the ECU. Our wiring harness is totally awesome. All the pieces that need to be replaced have already been replaced by wiring specialty sub harnesses. That's exciting stuff, man. I just noticed over my shoulder that my wife poked her head in. I need to help her out with a chore. When I get back, we'll start talking about lines, putting lines together, getting this catch can set up done, and then we're ready, dude. We're ready. We're ready with the freaking Z. I'm so excited. So this process is really super simple. You'll get the fitting assembled like this all screwed together. You just take it apart. Here's something to remember when you start measuring lines. You have to remember to calculate the amount of threads that are in here to where the hose is gonna stop on the inside. Once you start figuring out the other end, you don't wanna measure all the way up to here like this. You wanna measure somewhere back like that. You're just gonna feed this onto here and you're just gonna push it as far as it will go. And that was pretty easy. If if uh, if you're having trouble, usually you could just bang it like on the floor and it will get it to where it needs to go. And you can see now that the rubber is seated right as far as it will go inside here. Take your other end. And I actually like to use a little bit of 
uh, lube. I'm using engine assembly lube. Lube always makes it easier. I'm actually gonna put a little bit more lube down here and that will just help it slide onto the hose a little bit easier. Once it's inserted, you just wanna make sure that this still stays down and you're just gonna start tightening this down and it's just gonna start threading itself. Super simple, super easy. Making sure that nothing's backing off, backing away. You can get pretty far by hand. At some point, you're definitely gonna need a wrench. Obviously, the right tool to use in these jobs is like an aluminum wrench so that you're not scratching like so. There may come a point where you have to hold the other side here. Once you get this completely, this gap completely closed, uh, then you just measure it out to where your other fitting placement's gonna be, or again, keeping account for the amount of threads, for the depth. The easiest way is to put tape around this. Use like an actual grinder or something and just slice through this real quick. If you just cut it with scissors, this nylon will start to actually fray, which makes putting these ends on a lot more difficult. I always recommend putting a piece of tape right at the point where you're gonna cut. And then if you use a grinder, that heat will actually cauterize this nylon so it doesn't fray. So when you put the next end on, it just becomes that much more easier. I'm gonna finish, uh, let's see, I guess the other five ends, and then um, we'll start putting all the lines on and see how it looks. Top lines are in, looking funky, fresh, fabulous, and fine. Now I just gotta do this last line here. You can choose to actually vent this to atmosphere. The kit comes with this piece here, screws into the top, it sits flush here, so you could just vent to the atmosphere. I did this originally with my Stagia. I just got tired of the smell of the oil vapor, so I wanted to put it back into the intake. That's definitely what I'm gonna do here. It needs to come back to this point right there, that bung there. Here's the problem, and this is the problem I figured out with the Stagia. You can't just put another 90 degree bend here with an ORB-10 bung because everything's in the way. You would have to split the hoses in a very weird way and everything would spread out and just bizarre. I found a part back when I did the Stagia. This part here, I believe it's made by Raceworks. This is the actual part number if you're interested. Essentially what that does, it's a very low profile 90 degree that comes underneath these other two so that you can have a nice clean setup. It's perfectly fine and you don't have to worry about any kind of weird spreading out with your 90 degree angles. That's the last line that I have to make for the Z and then Guys, the catch can's done. And then it's go-go time, man. It's freaking go-go time. Everything is done, man. Last line is complete. Much more simple. Almost looks too tight. It's not too tight, but it looks that way, but so much cleaner the way it's all running together to the catch can. Now she is freaking ready. Everything is hooked up. I'm gonna get her off of these ramps, pull her back out, bring her back into the garage, and guys, it's, it's so good, man. It's so good. Let's see what she looks like when she's at her stance where she's supposed to be. so ever tucked in the back the back is gonna drop a little bit more as we drive around but the back fits really nice I really like these new tires I like the meat that's coming over the freaking rim a little bit here but that sits nice and pretty she's running nice and fine everything's happy inside the engine bay Obviously, she was a little grumpy moving her around because she wasn't warm, but uh, and she hasn't run in, in a little while. So, but everything else is freaking awesome now, dude.
so excited. She is totally ready to make her North Carolina debut. Let the people react, see what they think about it. It's it's gonna be fun, dude. I, I really like the way everything turned out. Nice and clean. Got rid of a lot of the extra stuff that was happening back there. I'm not gonna lie, I am really butthurt about this white battery. I might do something about that in, in the future, but the next thing I need to do is really spend the next couple days cleaning her up because guys, I'm, I'm gonna show up. I'm super excited about the Haltech for the Stagia. That's gonna transform all the things. I can't wait till we actually do the manual conversion on that. There's so many things I want to do to this car and now that I have a garage, I finally have the ability, the, the, the place, the mechanisms, all those things in place to actually do the things I want to the Stagia. I'm probably gonna order another battery exact like this for the Stagia. The one I have in there is just starting to cause me trouble. Maybe that's why they don't make it anymore. This car has sat for two weeks, hasn't even started, and the battery was still totally charged, hadn't lost any power. I'm gonna call it a night. It's been a long week, and I'm ready to just freaking chill out eat some chips as PC do and yeah start working on getting her really really clean and uh guys let's go break some necks let's break some necks ciao a tutti and aloha bye bye